So, wanted to make a video. Uh, we didn't get the uh, 10,000 mile journey that I promised on the channel. Um, that wasn't my fault. I I did everything I could for my mom, and uh, you probably, if you, know, if you follow the channel at all, you saw me hugging the toilet that I got into the house. Uh, she had one of those old 1950, you know, donut hole toilets, and uh, it quit working. I finally got a new toilet in the house. I've been trying to do that for 30 years. Um, so anyway, while I was up in Lynchburg, Virginia, campaigning for uh, Yunkin, by the way, he won. Woohoo! I did good. But, uh, you know, because you got to get out there, people, and you got to do what you can for the country, for what your beliefs are, you know. Um, you know, you don't need to riot. You don't need to burn buildings down. Uh, you got to defend freedom, you know, support the police, you know, do all the things that we as a nation have done. But uh, anyway, I, I got a phone call and my wife says, well, I'm, I'm moving out. <laughs> so, so once I was done with mom, and I won't tell you the batshit crazy stuff that she did while I was there, you know, we did get my dad off of the checking account. He'd been on there for four years since he died, you know, so that... I, you know, I tell you what, get, let me just give you some, some tips here, you know, because this channel is about education or edumacation, that's what I always call it, as much as it is uh, just uh, talking about things. So the first thing was to, to get dad's death certificate. Now, when you're dealing with an old person, um, they just start collecting mail. I mean, you know, her office was, a, she thought she was organized, but, uh, you know, me and my adopted stepsister, uh, we're, going, we're in there looking for my dad's death certificate and uh you know of course we're opening up boxes of, of mail and drawers of mail and the desk full of mail and file cabinets full of mail i mean it was i've never seen so much shit in my life you know i mean uh, so anyway we never found the death certificate so then it's like uh okay so we went out to the uh, state farm and uh because mom had to give the uh, insurance company the death certificate and she had a good idea i thought you know she said let's go to state farm and get get that copy of the death certificate so i went and got it and then we took it to the bank and the bank said oh no no we can't take a copy we have to have an original i said well where the hell do i go to get original i don't even know so then they said well you go out to the funeral home so i said okay so we drove to the funeral home and they're like well yeah yeah we can get it in three or four days i said I got to get back to Florida, man. <laughs> I can't wait three or four days to find the death certificate, you know. And he said, well, you know, because uh, all we, they were going to charge. And in their defense, they were only going to charge me what the health. And, and that was another thing was the Bureau of Statistics. And that's what it is in a lot of states. But in Virginia, it was actually Health and Human Services. OK, so I, and of course, I'm in I'm in my stepsister's car. And uh, so, so, so we leave the funeral home, then we go on down to the Health and Human Services to get an original copy of the death certificate. So then I go in and I'm like, well, okay, how do, how do I get a copy of the death certificate? You know, and they're like, uh, well, first, I, the first challenge was, uh, and by the way, we're, we're, talking, we're talking days of work here, just, just trying to get my dad off of the checking account. <laughs> you know, it's insane. So, so we... Um, we get to the health and human services and I'm used to being in Florida. You know, we don't have vax mandates in Florida. We don't have mask requirements in Florida, but in, well, at, at that time it was Democrat Virginia. It's now Republican Virginia. Maybe they're going to vote these things out or, you know, cause they got a great Lieutenant governor, that black woman, uh, Marine, uh, or ex Marine, I guess. Well, there are no ex Marines that black woman, Marine veteran, uh, she's squared away, and I tell you what, Yunkin, uh, he's a businessman, so I think Virginia's, they're going to do well uh, underneath this leadership. I think it's, uh, that's a good thing, and I'm glad I was able to campaign for him. But anyway, so, um, so I get to the door, and it says masks required. Well, I didn't bring my mask. It was in my car. I, I do keep a mask in my car because I knew I was going to a Democrat state. And so I get back to Wanda, and she, I don't have a mask. So now we had to go out and buy, buy some masks. I go to the store so I can go back to Health and Human Services to get through the front door to get in there to get a health certificate. So then the next thing you run into is uh, they want to know uh, uh, who my grand, what my grandfather's name was and what my grandmother's name was. Well, I just knew her as grandma. I swear, I mean, isn't that terrible? I, I, I didn't know what her name was, and I only knew her a brief amount of time before she died. She died like when I was five years old. And then my grandpa, he died before I was born. 
So I never really knew his name. I just knew him. I, well, I thought it was William, William Payton. And of course, I've already put previous videos out, but William Payton. And uh, so I said, well, son of a gun. So then, you know, I asked her, but luckily I had that copy of the death certificate from State Farm. And that information was on that death certificate. But then I didn't bring my damn glasses. <laughs> So, so I could, it was in little tiny print on that copy of the death certificate. And I said, I told her, I said, ma'am, I'm sorry, man. I said, unless you're going to let me borrow your glasses, because I don't have my car. I'm with my stepsister, my adopted stepsister, let's just say. I said, I can't read the damn death certificate. And she's like, well, you know, I can do it. So I'm just kind of crying on your shoulder about that whole thing. But it, it is an edumacation in what you got to do when you deal with old people and uh and luckily i got the toilet in and then we got dad's name off of that and then of course i got the phone call that i was getting divorced and my wife was well there's actually a neighbor who called me and said there's a moving truck in front of your house and they're moving stuff out i said oh sh shoot i gotta get back to florida <laughs> you know? and you know i'm still uh uh assessing the damage uh i think she's as even as a democrat uh she's she's trying to be fair about it uh, uh I, she's on vacation right now, and that's why I got the dog. And she did bring him by, and uh, you know. But I, at, at the same time, I mean, here's another little edumacation for you if you ever go through a divorce. Now I had her as the joint owner on all of my accounts, okay? Because we've been married for 21 years, and uh, to get a joint owner off of your accounts, you have to. Um, well, basically, what you can do, at least here in Florida, I don't know what it's like in other states, but you have to close the account and open a new account in your name to get, get your spouse because it's without consent. Now, if you have consent, which, by the way, I, the, the, the consent form that I got from uh, Pentagon Federal Credit Union, which is where the U.S. Congress banks, um, they want a notary of republic, and we have to sign the form together. So you have to have your spouse go to the bank with, or go to a notary, and both of you sign the form before you can send it in and, and get her off with consent. And you might say, well, why don't you just close the account? Well, all my direct deposits, all my uh, uh, automatic uh, uh, bill paying and everything comes out of that account. So, so certain accounts I need consent for, and certain accounts I don't need consent for. So it's a... Uh, it's a work in progress, and I don't, you don't need to hear me cry about things. Uh, she did leave me some furniture. She took the good TVs, and I'm, I'm looking at TVs right now, and I'll probably be doing a review because uh, I figure maybe by Black Friday, uh, although inflation has hit, I mean, when you think about I just bought that Toyota Prius Prime for the trip to Virginia. Thank God I did. Uh, I got, by the way, uh, between uh, 70 and 81 uh, miles to the gallon. That's what I was getting. Uh, once the battery was completely discharged, not bad. I mean, that's the best gas mileage of any vehicle that I know of, you know, but, uh, and I can go 600. That was another thing that was weird about the damn trip. I'm driving to Virginia and, uh, you know, when you don't have to buy gas, cause it goes 650 miles on one 11 gallon tank of gas. I, 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 the only way I could pull over is to find a rest stop. Well, the GPS takes you all over damn place, you know, especially when there's accidents and everything. And so, so sometimes I would go, you know, four or five, six hours, you know, without finding a rest stop because I don't need gas. So what's the point of pulling over to gas station? <laughs> you know, so, so, so that's a whole different problem. I mean, it's a good problem to have. Let's just say that. Uh, so then, uh, you know, we moved on uh, from there and, um, uh, well, look, you know, I think uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse thing is going down in flames. I don't know if you uh, have had time to watch any of that. I think that's a beautiful thing. That's a wonderful statement for uh, the Second Amendment and for our, our uh, rights. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of... Po oh, here's the, here's the last thing I'm going to end this video with. And I thought this was a hell of an idea. And uh, I think this is what we need to do. You know, because right now, until we have a, well, by the way, conventionofthestates.com slash uh, Dave, okay, conventionofthestates.com slash Dave, because I watched the Rubin report on YouTube, and uh, we need a convention of the states. I mean, there's no doubt about it. The federal overreach at this point has gone uh, beyond anything we could ever imagine, and uh, unless we want to fight another civil war, uh, hopefully we can get out of this thing peacefully. You know, that's what I'm hoping anyway. At least now that my liberal Democrat, you know, uh, against the Second Amendment wife is gone, I can, you know, I can start uh, prepping the house for uh, any, any sort of burglars that try to come in and, and maybe uh, have some guns sitting out so that it 
because I don't have kids. You know, if you got kids, you wouldn't want to do it. But I, I'll keep the guns out where, you know, somebody wants to break through that front door. But, you know, here's another thing for you. All right. When somebody's trying to break through that front door, if they can just kick it in and come in lickety split, you not, might not be able to get to your guns. But if you can reinforce that front door so that they have to, to bang on it and knock it. Well, the, from what I've seen, they'll have to take the whole door frame out to get in. Now, they could bust through the windows, and I'm thinking about some impact-resistant windows and maybe some theft-proof windows. But as long as you can delay them getting into your house and you can get to your guns, you got, you know. And then, of course, be sure, you know, this is another piece of advice. Like I said, I'm trying to educate you. Wait till they're in the house before you shoot them. Okay, even in Florida, I wouldn't you I wouldn't want to shoot them as they're coming through the window. You know, I would wait till they're fully in the house and then kill them right there on the spot. And that's what you're going to have to do, because, I mean, I, I think things are going to get pretty tough here pretty soon. I'm just giving you another piece of advice. But uh, so so really what you got to do is weapon up your house to make it difficult for them to get in. Because, you know, if, if all they got to do is break a window and climb through it, you know, you're passed out or asleep in the bedroom, you know. You're not going to know anything, but if they got a bang and bang and bang on the windows to try to break them out, well, you might have time. You might have a little bit of time to get to that gun, and especially if you're keeping it nearby. And now, I, now that my wife is gone, I can do that. Um, so, sorry, just getting off on tangents, just talking about things. Um, but anyway, what DeSantis suggested, and I thought this was a great idea, and this is why I wanted to make a video tonight. Um, he said, because we can't deport as states right now, unless, you know, because we're still under the Constitution and the Supreme Court has ruled that states can't deport illegal aliens, okay, because the borders are, are completely open. And, uh, and what DeSantis suggested, and I thought it was a great freaking idea, but I wanted to add to it just one little thing. He said, let's take all the illegal aliens as states. OK, put them on buses, which is the same thing Biden's doing because he's shipping them all over the damn country. And a lot of them are coming to Florida. You know, uh, you know what that's all about. They want to give them uh, voting status and uh, so they can keep the Democrat Party in power. But anyway, let's take them to Delaware. That's where M Biden has his illegal, uh, you know, million dollar mansions. Why not just take them to Delaware? And I wanted that's just this is the one step further that I think would be good. Let's give them tents. OK, and let's drop them off right in front because Biden's got fences around his houses. You know, he's completely protected. He's got Secret Service and all of that. But they're inside the compound. OK, they're not outside the fences. So for them buses to drive up in front of his mansions, just drop off the illegal aliens. And I'm not trying to be cruel. We'll put some tents up for them, maybe some heaters because it's going to be cold up there at this time of the year. Give them some food and let's just camp them all around Biden's mansions. I think that's a hell of an idea, and, I, and so that's why I'm adding to DeSantis. He said just ship them to Delaware. I think we need to ship them right in front of Biden's house, let them unload the buses, and, let the, and we'll, we'll give the illegal aliens food. And it, it seems to me it's a lot cheaper way than putting them in concentration camps down in Texas and you know, Florida and where they're getting shipped and, you know, and then feeding them in those places. Hell, let Delaware deal with it. Right? That's where Biden lives most of the time when he's not asleep. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that bumbling fool, you know. And, and by, he, he, even add to that, I'd ship him. I don't know where Kamala Harris is. I think she's from California. She was a prosecutor there, I believe. Hell, let's ship him, let's ship him over to Kamala Harris's house in California. You know, they're coming across by the thousands, and you think about it. I mean, how much would it cost the states to load a bunch of illegal aliens onto the buses and just drive them to to California. I don't I don't think it cost in the millions, you know, probably eventually because all that gas and everything. But right now, Biden's flying them all over the United States and he's shipping them all over the United States. So what the hell? That seems like a good solution to me. So I'm going to do the mantra since I'm back in Florida and I'm still I'm still reeling from my wife moving out and taking a lot of stuff. And, uh, and you know, I got to figure everything out. But uh Let's just say it's good to be back in Florida where we have no mask mandates, no jab, and no COVID restrictions, and no lockdowns. And uh, that's it for this video. Boo, let's get up. You got to say hi. Boo, say hi to my audience. Here's the boo dog. Yeah, look at him. He's happy. He's happy. Yeah, we're going to go watch a movie now. 
You guys peace out, and I'll upload this movie tonight and uh, put it up on Parlor and uh, probably Getter. Those are the only two places that I post videos. And, uh, of course, you can find me on YouTube at That Cybersecurity Guy, although I'm completely buried. You're going to have to search at DuckDuckGo and maybe find one of my videos and subscribe to the channel. Um, I don't make any money. Okay, I'm not I'm not monetized. And then you can still find me on Rumble. I'll put the video up on Rumble and you can find me there. Peace out. Stay free.